Hi, and welcome to another episode of Making Things. Today, I'll be going over the differences between uh, mechanical and solid-state relays, but mostly I'll be going over a real versus a fake uh, or counterfeit solid-state relay. And the reason for this is after a close call with a, almost a house fire at a, actually the house of one of my friends. Um, now, I'll start off with a bit of a shill. Please subscribe. YouTube has changed their um, policies and essentially can't monetize unless I've got enough subscribers. Uh, views and likes don't mean anything anymore, uh, at least not when it comes to monetization. So if this is helpful, if you like it, please do subscribe. I know it's changed how I decide whether or not I like or subscribe videos now. Enjoy. Right. So there are a lot of differences between these, um, the solid state and the mechanical relays. You know, these are faster, they last longer, um, they need ventilation, these don't need ventilation. They'll still last uh, tens of millions of cycles though, don't get me wrong. It's not like they're gonna, you know, bust on you when you're using it in your workshop, uh, you know, every week or anything like that. Usable, usable voltage range, I guess it depends how much you're willing to spend. They'll both do just about everything you want for uh, voltage and current. Um, but you'll get it a lot cheaper on the solid state side. Uh, sorry, I mean on the mechanical side. But the major difference is how these fail. When a mechanical relay fails, it fails open, which means that current stops flowing through it, and that's the end of it. When a solid state relay fails, it fails closed. Um, if you want, a good demo of that, check out Abe's video, I'm going to link it below, where he actually shows a, a, a drill in which the trigger was controlled by essentially a solid, solid state relay, a MOSFET, and it failed. Um, so it's the exact same type of tech in here, and so it would just stay on. Uh, now if you combine that, that with the fact that these need ventilation and are prone to overheating if they're not properly uh, heat dissipated, heat synced, um, you know, you, you can run into some issues, obviously, and that's exactly what happened to a friend of mine, actually. This thing caught fire. Uh, specifically, actually, he bought a few of these from uh, China. Uh, they were, I think, about three bucks a piece, and one of these caught on fire. Um, melted, like it was just completely incinerated. There's, I, I brought it back to try and take it, take it apart for the, for this video, actually, and like it crumbled in my hands, literally. So there's just nothing left of it. Uh, so what I did is I bought a properly sourced one. I got, got it on DigiKey. So it cost about uh, 50 bucks instead of $3. Now, obviously these aren't the same brand, or at least this one is not a knockoff of the Panasonic. So when we're opening them, we're not going to be looking to see if it's exactly the same. But ballpark, you know, is it is it grossly different? Is there a huge difference between this, you know, sixty dollar solid state relay and this three dollar one, uh, which is most likely the case? Um, right off the bat, though, what surprises me is the Panasonic uh, has a much smaller backing, um, and it looks thinner. But I have to figure this out. Is I don't know what metal this is. It doesn't look... This is aluminium. Um, but I'm not 100% sure what this is. The first thing I'd like to do is weigh them in, but I can't find my kitchen scale. Um, we moved in the last year and haven't found it yet. So. Oh well. This one feels quite a bit heavier though. Actually, right off the bat. Like, significantly so. Yeah, so I I think I figured out why this has been throwing me off. Um, so the sheen on the backing here was, you know, is clearly just rolled aluminium. Um, and then I'm getting the same kind of doubts when I'm looking at even just the, the screws. They're a lot duller, so it might just be the finish. But I've just realized as I'm looking here... I, I think these are really poorly finished, or it's centered, which is strange. Um, I don't know, I guess, 
I guess it depends. We'll have to see why. Maybe it's cast, but it really does look like it's centered. Ah. Alright, well. <laughs> That one's clearly never going into use again. Or actually, it never has been, so it's never going into use. Uh, but I don't think I would have been able to do anything else than destroy it. Um, this is all it looks like. I, I've seen this before. Give me a second, I actually know why. Recognize it, it's got the exact same, yeah, this is urethane. I'd, I'd be willing to bet this is urethane. So, I don't know why, but... Hmm. And now that I've busted it, let's see if this would have come out easily if I had just decided to try and pop it out from this side, which seems to make a lot more sense. Yeah, okay, so that was my bad. Well, actually no, it would have still broken because it would have been stuck on there, so... Alright, well, I'm glad I'm starting with the $3 one, because I'm going to try and not bust the Panasonic one. Yeah, okay, I had no choice. This is the urethane bonded to the casing, so. Oh, look at that. <coughs> oh, wow. Everything is covered. Yeah, I'm not going to be getting much out of this. But right off the bat, we do know this is the heatsink. Um, at least I can see the chip, so I'll be able to look that up in a couple seconds. The rest of it looks... Yeah, there's a bunch of flux everywhere, so that, that was a crap job. Um, access here is going to be a little trickier. There's no easy part to start punching at. Alright, so this has slipped through. There's nothing under there, so everything's going just through that little tab, whereas here they were relying on these large, yeah, this is centered, these large centered parts for, um, but I'm pretty sure this is zinc, it doesn't look like aluminium. Oh, this was just clipped in. Alright, well I guess this is standard practice. Everything in here has been covered as well. Alright. Yeah. Difference number one. I'm not sure I'll be able to see the MOSFET on this thing. Oh, look at that. So on the inside, there's, there you go, the contacts are definitely big enough. So instead of being lumps, they're just spread out thin, but these are huge contacts. So that answers the question as to why they didn't need as big of contacts. It's because they're just set up differently. All right, well. I think I managed to scratch off half the numbering. So, if you can hear disappointed in my voice, it's because it's there. But the first thing I can say is, so if the goal was to see if these are built substantially different in a substantially different way, um, they're not. You know, different design, sure. Um, different elastic compound. All right, uh, but nothing that jumps out screaming one of these is a counterfeit. You know, if I just if I just showed both of both of these without any other context, and there's nothing that screams out this one's a this one's a piece of garbage. So I have to check this one, and I guess this was the important one. It's to see, you know, it was rated at 25 amps. Let's see, let's see what it actually is rated for. 
BTA 16 600B. <coughs> I'm hoping. Yeah, RMS on state current 16 amps. Yeah, so this is only good for 16 amps. So, I mean, in this case, he was running at about 13, um, 12 or 13, thinking 25 good amount of overhead but general rule of thumb is um, at least that I I like to stick to is 80% for electronics uh, whatever it's rated at if you're gonna be running it more than 80% a lot of the time or even at 80% it's probably time to look to you know upping the size so it, it will heat you'll need proper will need more heat dissipation so on in this case, the setup did not have proper heat dissipation to start with. It was being run pretty much to its limit. Um, I mean, continuous use at, yeah, 12 out of 16, 75%, 13 out of 16. Yeah, no. So, clearly a knockoff, clearly mislabeled, but that's usually the case with, um, you know, knockoffs people think things poorly made somewhere else I mean sure poorly made uh, yeah okay um, can't say it wasn't not an expert but it's not like a you know knockoff brand where you'll just have another silk screen for the same logo and all of a sudden you've got a knockoff t-shirt because someone in a completely separate factory made the same t-shirt um, in, in, in electronics usually it'll be it'll be the same factory it'll just be running uh you know taking factory seconds or rebranding or just running extra shifts and um, making more products while the production line is supposed to be down um gray market stuff like that uh, when i sold cameras i remember as quite a few years ago at some point we'd gotten a warning from nikon from headquarters telling us we were not to honor uh returns from a certain merchant I'm not gonna name um, because unbeknownst to them they had received a full shipment like a full warehouse shipment of D70 Nikon cameras that Nikon could not account for um, <laughs> straight up now the retailer in question never did sell all that many um, and they quickly took them off the shelves I think Nikon was asking that they were that we redirect them directly to Nikon and if memory serves me um, yeah we were supposed to send them directly to Nikon because they were trying to track the issue they didn't want it to go through their regular repair system because they wanted to uh, have the camera on hand so and the retailer was on the up and up and uh, you know they weren't in circulation for very long um, but it really shows how deep that can go so you know this isn't uh, this isn't just a small conspiracy or whatever like this definitely happens and in this case they mislabeled it and started a fire so so yeah ultimately you could say I didn't really need to take apart the Panasonic one which is $30 I kept saying 60 it's been a while since I bought it uh, I was looking up stuff I ran across it again it was 30 bucks but then you add 10 bucks shipping whatever the point is, I didn't need to take it apart, but I wanted to. Uh, I was tired of looking at online videos, of trying to do research on this, and you know, you can read all you want. I, I really wanted to see the insides, but I had no one comparing them side by side. They were always opening just the chintzy one, you know. And no one was ponying, ponying up to open a a nice one, so I did it, and uh, gotta say that, yeah, it. Uh, it came from the same factory would be my guess I mean there doesn't seem to be anything that is inherently wrong with this other than it is mislabeled now did they cheap out a little bit on this elastic having you know a second material to use I don't know but honestly who cares that's not what made a catch fire and yeah, that's scary honestly I think it's, it's scarier for it to be essentially fine to me because you really can't tell apart the fake one from the real one unless you actually you can't 
you just you can't you have to tear it apart or either you have to tear it apart or you have to make sure that you know who made it when who handed it off to who you, you, you have to track everything or there's there's just no way to know well I got what I wanted out of this not as much but the basics was done not surprising MOSFET was the wrong one but disconcerting uh, clearly not obviously fake so just got to be careful the reason I find that so disconcerting is because it makes it really easy to justify getting the knockoff because I mean if you're gonna be using it underrated uh, yeah that was good enough and it was cheap and you might be using it for years without a problem until eventually you start pushing it and yeah and how do you tell people not to use knockoffs if really they're just as good as the real thing as long as you get lucky or you're you know not pushing them to the limit Makes you think. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. If you liked it, please like, subscribe. Have a good day.